welcome to Tricent Martial Channel, a new episode of Internal in a nutshell. So this is not following a patron only video that I made last week, where a Patreon supporter was asking me about uh, Han Xiong Ba Bei and Xu Ling Ding Li, the, the two qualities of internal martial arts, specific, specifically the way that Tai Chi describes it, part of the 10 principles of Tai Chi, right? Han Xiong Ba Bei and Xu Ling Ding Li. So I, as I made a bit of only video uh, answering that particular supporter's question, and then he had a follow-up question, and then today we're here to answer that. So basically he's so basically in a, in a nutshell, the people that I'm, I'm talking about that is that Han Xiong Ba Bei is the force that goes in, and Xu Ying Ding is a force that goes, goes, goes up. And then his follow-up question is that, you know, is that only to get the body in, sh in the correct posture? Because his question is that if someone is applying a force to him or me, does that force still get sink down to the ground rather than going up? Now that is a little complicated, right? Uh, it, it's a yes and no question. So yes, the force is going down because we're all living on Earth and we are subjected to gravity. So the force has to go, go down. It can't go up. However, there's also a subtle difference between people who do it correctly and people who are just like compressing down. So what that means is, when we're talking about rooting to the ground and then transferring the, the opponent force to the ground, some people think of it as um, a compression. So what it means is, right, if somebody's pushing versus here with arm, it doesn't matter. Right? So I'm, I'm rooting to the ground, I'm rooting to the ground, and when he pushes, all I'm doing is just okay, go right, yeah. and just, just rooting further, further into the ground, right, and the ground and it looks like a stance. So you kind of have the kind of um, root. I, mean, I don't actually do that, so this is not a good example. But you have people out there who either does that, or you, or you go to see them, Tai Chi guy who, who have like the, the whole arm thing, and when they push, then he'll be like, you know, I'm rooting to, to, to the ground. And then, so whatever the guy does, you know, he's like, you know, I'm solid here. So I don't actually do it that way, so I'm doing a pretty bad representation of it. But I'm sure, you know, if you've been around long enough, you know what I'm talking about. But the reason I don't do this is because in my lineage we don't believe in that kind of routine where you just take all the force and then you, you drop it to the ground. Okay? We believe that yes, force is going down, but the force is also going up. So this shooting thing, the, the hip going up, is not only to get your body in the right posture, it's also a type of force that's happening inside your body. And you might ask them, what is the point, right? If the person is is pushing me and I'm trying to root downwards, what is the point of a force going upwards, right? I mean, how is that supposed to help? So that actually goes back to another important principle and, and often misunderstood principle in Tai Chi, which is Peng, right, the expansion force, the first and most primary force of Tai Chi. So in short, if he has a force, right, so the first, and my force is like this, then I'm receiving all the force into the bo bottom. Right? So that's what uh, some people perceive as rooting, transferring force to the ground. However, that is less efficient than if I'm here and I'm actually overstretching a across this, his energy vector, or whatever you want to call it. So he's going this way. Instead of only going that way, I'm actually going both up and down. It's kind of expands. And I'm not exactly sure the technical term, but when you do that, it creates a better support or resistance against the incoming force. Can you think of the physics analogy behind this? Not really. Not really. Right. Not really. But uh, the, the, the thing that... Actually, I got this from Ethos. Okay. Yeah. It says, whenever you try to oppose a force, right, you don't oppose it in one direction. Yes. Yeah. You, you oppose it in multiple directions, like an expansion of the yes. So when, when I'm trying to push against Chris yeah. Chase, right? Yeah. He is not resisting my force by only having one vector. He is exist uh, he's resisting my force from all direction, from up, down, left, right, etc. etc. Yeah. So that's how the expansion force works. Mm -hmm. So there's no one direction to it. Yeah. It expands like a and if you, you know, if that doesn't make sense to you, you can, you can maybe do a lot, like a basic test where, um, you know, if, if you ask somebody to just hold your wrist 
and then push against you. And if you try to push against him by the wrist, you see that's much harder, right, than if you're pushing him by your fingers. Because there's much more force this way than, than if I hold the foot and I try to relax the hand, I'm only pushing him by where he's holding me. So, so this is when the two force are hit butting. Other one is when the, this force is pushing here, but this force is going kind of past that point of contact. Okay, so that's essentially what's happening here. When, he, when he's pushing me, so, so instead of only rooting downwards, which is still the position you can push, right? Let's do the different one that go up. Well, do you see any difference on, on your end? Yeah, it, it just feels like the other one is harder to, for me to resist. But you notice my hip going up. Uh, yes, yeah, well, your body wise, yes. 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 But force wise, it doesn't, uh, to me, right, okay. on the receiver yes. end, I just feel that there's an extra pair of hands mm -hmm. pushing against me. I see. That's how it feels. Yeah, so, so, so I don't have the exact physics description on this one, right, unfortunately. But, um, but there is something going on here that's physical. It's not metaphysical, it's not chi power, you know, supernatural. It's, it's physics, I just don't quite know how to explain it. So I've given this situation some more thought and I came up with this sort of experiment that can help you further understand what is going on from a physics perspective. So imagine that you have this tall object, let's say a fridge. Right? So let's, you know, let's, let, let me use this pen to represent a fridge. And the fridge is holding towards you. Now imagine you have to hold up against this fridge. Now if you put your hand on the tip of the fridge, right? And if you can't imagine this, go get a fridge or something similar, human size and heavy, and then lean it towards you and do this test, right, physically. So if the fridge is leaning towards you and you put your, your hand and arm on the tip and feel how much stress your arm is experiencing when you're holding it like that, then put your hand to the, to the, to one third towards the bottom, right? So it's covering three pieces, about one third, that's where the chest is. And then feel how much stress you receive on your arm. And if you do this experiment correctly, you will notice that it's far easier to be holding this fridge or anything else of that size if you put your hand on the top tip of that object. As your hand starts to move towards the bottom, the apparent weight that you experience on your arm will become more. It increases. Now the reason for that is simply just the basic principle of fulcrum and leverage because as there's, more, as there's more mass that goes over the point of intersection or the point of contact then that force is exp ex exponentially applying more pressure to your receiving hand whereas if it's like this then they're not applying as much force so that is pretty much the basic physics behind why if someone is putting your hand on your chest, of course not when you're putting your hand on your chest or on your arm or in any other position, they're not physically putting the hand on your head. However, if your head does not lead up and you do not have an opposing force that expands in all directions, then it's, it, in effect, it's basically like, like another person is pushing against the tip of your force and therefore it's much easier to resist compared to if somebody is putting his hand on your chest or on your arm or wherever but your force it exceed, it exceeds the point of contact and the range that he can control and in doing so even though your physical mass has increased you are in turn applying more force and pressure toward his point of contact but the important thing here right answering my favorite sports question is that, yes, the idea is that your force is going down, but you don't only focus on the force going down, you're focusing on the force going down and up and forward and back all at the same time. I'm actually, when I'm resisting this, my head is actually trying to reach something on top. Not physically, but there's, there's, you know, there's, a, there's a pull through my skeletal structure. And so, so that's why in the previous video we talked about what we talked about, and how why is the force going up? Xi Ling why is that important? Why in Tai Chi, if you see somebody doing Tai Chi and, and he's like this, then no matter anything else he does might be great, this is bad Tai Chi because it's like that, right? 
And, and also keep in mind, compression expansion is not the same as not having a heat pull up. So even if my chest and body is compressing, this force, no matter what I do, it, it always goes up. Okay, so essentially, that's what it is. Right, so in case you're wondering why we don't want to just receive the force and compress down, why we want to go up, uh, but beside the obvious, which is, you know, you have better structure, there's also a more practical reason, right? Um, in reality, this, you know, Tai Chi isn't a type of war or a test of strength. We're not trying to see, you know, it's like, we're not like two bulls butting head and trying to see who is stronger. This is just a way to teach and test mechanical structures. In reality, what is actually happening is that I'm trying to move against him, he's moving against me. I'm trying to hit him and he's trying to, to hit me. So, you have to consider your mobility and your freedom of motion. Even if I could compress downwards and receive his force and be immovable, right? Um, like some, especially like chainsaw people, they like to, to, to do that these days. Not all of them, right? Chainsaw is good. There's, there, but there's, there, there are a lot of them that are missing form and they want to like a root and say, you know, you can't push me. Problem with that is, yeah, he can't push you, but what can you do? Can you, can you stick and move against him? They also can't because they require the structure to resist. The moment they take off their foot, they're going to get pushed back and therefore whatever they perform or, or demonstrate is pointless. There's no practical use, okay? Whereas in my knowledge of Tai Chi, we basically believe that no matter how much force I receive, I must not feel that pressure on myself and I'm able to pick up my leg and move as freely as possible, okay? That's also another reason why the head needs to go up because then what happens is while he's pushing against me and I'm trying to pass his fall to the ground, right, and then push against him, the moment I'm doing the correct quality, I can still move against him and, and do, do, do stuff. So obviously this is just a demonstration of the structure, but in reality that means that I'm still able to take a step and punish him while I'm absorbing the force through this both up and down, okay? And this is, a, is part of another principle of the, of the 10 principles of Tai Chi, which is 上下相随, right, up and down synchronization. This is basically what that is partially referring to. There are other elements too, like the rebound force, etc. that we're not going to go into detail here, but having up and down at the same time is part of Shangxia Shangxia Xiangzui. So Shangxia Xiangzui is not as crude and basic as some people like to say, which is your feet and hand land together. Well, yes, your feet and hand do land together, but that is for a different purpose than what they are referring to, right? It's not just a synchronization of motion, it's a synchronization of the rebound force. So that's why the leg and the hand hit together. The moment I draw my weight, it's the same moment I hit someone. But we'll talk about that in a separate video on rebound force. But in this case, do you know that Shangha Xiang also refers to having a force going down and a force coming back up at the same time. If it goes down and then comes up, then that's not Shangha Xiang Sui. Okay, because they are not in sync. So that's the practical reason of why, while receiving this force, my head had to go up, so that my body actually isn't hindered by emotion. I'm not cramped up just receiving this force, and then I have to like fight against it again to overcome it. When he's pushing down, my force is already going up and over his force. That's why at any moment I want to move, my force is surpassing the point he's pushing, and therefore I can easily move. And then another uh, patron supporter, Simon Wang, uh, he had a similar question, so I'm also going to just talk about it here, which is that, you know, when the head go up, does it go up every time I, I do a hit? Or is it, is it always up? You know, like what is the pacing in that? Um, <coughs> in short, it depends on what style you do, what movement you, you do, but in general, shooting Ding Li, right, the upward force is always there. Like, right? the moment I'm standing here, that force is there. The only time that's not there is when you're not training. Even then, one could argue it should be there. But obviously, you know, when I'm working in front of a computer, drawing, I get lazy and I start doing this. But ideally, it should be there the whole time. However, it also, sometimes a more essential way is, for example, if I'm doing a mud punch, and actually when I'm doing mud punch, my body drops, my body comp compresses, so, and in doing so, it kind of naturally drops the head. And that's a problem. So, in these particular cases, then, I readjust a bit more on the head so that when my body compresses, 
the hip goes up just a little bit more, so that it kind of balances out the compression and the dropping of the body. So in those cases, then, yeah, the hip kind of goes up a little bit extra. But you know, but it's not to say that if I'm, for example, in each one doing three punches, my hip goes up three three times. Uh, you know, so if I'm in each one, if I'm just doing punches, then the head is always at constant motion up. My whole body is in a six directional expansion, and that doesn't change. But in certain styles, then yes, it, it does go up a little bit more in certain specific moments, right? So there's no general answer for that. It's depending on what movement and what style you do. But in general, when you do internal style, there's always a quality of this. If, if, it's not, not, if there's nothing pulling you up and you start to dangle, that is bad internal, no matter how good these other qualities are. Is what I so, so the way that I understand the okay. pictures or visualizers is, um, I don't know whether have you guys seen those advertisement inflatable men. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know those things, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, we all know that. You know what? And you, you can get a job in imitating that. You know, for stand up comedian. Well, you, you I, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm uh, not. It's a movie, right? But one piece, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm not a, a made of gum. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where imagine your body is that inflatable man, right? And when you're fighting, and when you're channeling or doing, using your internal power, your body is always inflated. Mm, yes. Does that inflation make you move up and down? Not so much. Yeah, it shouldn't. It shouldn't, exactly. Yeah. But you know, when you do your body movements, right? It, sometimes you will bounce up and down a little bit. Yes. So that's that's my analogy to to this whole you know pulling your head up and you know forces going down. It's not there to it, it's almost like a there to inflate you, so that your channel is open. Uh, yeah. It's always there all the time. Yes. So yeah. So but your body still you know it's not saying that like you know your your head must be like this. Yeah. So that's what's important, right? So this is it's not that. Yeah. This is a hard going yeah. out. So how to exactly do it? Find a qualified teacher where you live and learn it. I can't teach you that through video. So this is more like background knowledge and general understanding, right? So there's a subtle difference between dangling, stuff, and the correct way of, of putting up. So yeah, so, so it's always it to me. Even if you're doing other movements, right? It's still good. So yes. Yeah, so I hope that this answered my supporters' questions and you know, and thanks him and some well, both of them for supporting our Patreon. And I hope that this also is of interest to the rest of you. And if you do find my, my videos interesting and useful, then do subscribe on my YouTube channel. And if you can support me on Patreon, I'd be greatly appreciated. And in doing so, you have access to a lot more Patreon exclusive videos, including the one mentioned here. And you can have a better understanding on the mechanics of internal. And as always, I've always said, I'm not trying to teach you internal martial arts through video because I don't think that's possible. That's the way I see it. However, I, I will share information that will give you a far better understanding and develop the correct eye to spot good internal from fake internal so that when you do go on to your personal pursuit in internal martial arts, you are far less likely to be scammed by fake martial art masters, which believe me, there are plenty of them out there, alright? As always, thanks, thanks to all my Patreon supporters for their support, especially through the pandemic, and for any questions for current content, Suggest them for future content or feel free to message me. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Lastly, I'd like to remind everyone we're in the pandemic still. It might not look like it, but only crying is all around. So wear your mask, wash your hands, social distance, stay safe and stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Trazen's Martial Channel.